horses with all kinds of, of mounts and holders. Yeah. This is I am <laughs> heaven, yeah. Nickname for this is Audio Village. <laughs> I'm rotating with with right hand, trying to boom <laughs> someone and not to get in shot. 360 with this microphone mm -hmm. and I could do uh, like miracles in the post-production with this. Welcome to the latest Ursa exclusive. I'm here with Victor from Sohom Sound in Slovakia. Hello! Hi Simon, <laughs> nice Hi. to have you here in Slovakia and accepting our invitation to come here thank for you. the workshop and it was really great, thank you. Oh, it's fantastic and Victor's been so generous and we're going to have a video which really just goes through the kit you use yeah. on set for the films you work yeah. on and also get a chance to meet your team who yeah. are here with us today. Adam and Miro. Yeah, so my first uh, key boom operator Miro and uh, my uh, second sound assistant Adam also on the boom and on the radio mics. Key radio mic yeah, operator. Yeah, definitely. It should be a role in itself these days, definitely. radio mic technician. <laughs> I think a lot of our movies are about radio mics nowadays, so yeah. it's really important. Cool, let's have a little look-see at the trolley to yeah. start with. So tell me a little bit about this. It's a really nice, sleek design. Yeah, this is like a new build. Before we had something that was really big, really huge. Kantar X3, uh, a console to Kantar X3. A lot of PSCs with the uh, dual slot receiver. So it was quite mm -hmm. heavy, quite big. And this is the new thing. So we are starting to get smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter yeah. because it's Always you need to find a spot uh, somewhere in the corner and to yeah. be as small as possible. Yeah. And so this is the new build. When I'm go going from the console CL16 mm. uh, from sound devices, my main recorder here is 888 uh, with SL2. In the SL2 we can uh, see uh, mm. Visicom sitting here, the MCR54 and the RX20. And yeah. what's the new thing in the kit? Is this really cool small Nexus 16 channels mm. in one small unit? I think is the best. And the Nexus is sitting in a small half rack, it's 3U rack. And what this just comes off, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the idea behind it. That yeah. you will just take it and put it on a separate card that will stay on a set. Mm. And you don't need to run the heavy, large uh, RF cables. You can mm. just run one Dante cable, mm. one Ethernet cable and you have the sound at your trolley from the set and mm. you don't need to have problems with the reception. That's cool. I mean, that's really great. I mean, obviously range yeah. to know that you don't, your trolley location yeah. is, doesn't depend upon your yeah. aerial location. You can just yeah. run that out on many tens of meters. Yeah. I mean, hundreds of meters of cable between yeah. you and the receivers. And, and also with the Nexus, you can go with the optical fiber. So yeah. even more than 100 meters yeah. is possible, yeah. And we can put the Nexus on this one and it can mm. be on the side. Oh, so this is like your, a secure place yeah. for, for putting the Nexus. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Call. For example, this can stay yeah. on the set. But there's Aerials separate. on that as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And also the back, it's with A33 smaller bag. You can see mm. also Visicom here. And mm. we are choosing if we will put audio there, li audio mm. limited slash sound devices, or we will put Sure yeah. there. So this is also another option. And here, these are like the transmitters for public and private. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You can go from the Nexus also to these uh, transmitters and I use it usually for the village or uh, for the director or for some separate feed mm. and this was used for speakers on the project before mm. it's labeled speakers and this is receiver is actually my feedback from the village uh, oh, the, the return. Yeah, from the video village is a return yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. always important isn't it for yeah. Q take and uh, playback yeah. okay so, so Guys, do you want to run us through a little bit of the other equipment you use in these really cool, what do they call Milwaukee pack-out boxes? Yeah, that's it. And Adam, let's start. Yeah, yeah. Um, this part is for uh, wearing, wearing rubber talents. Uh, it's for radio mics. So here we have some stickers, uh, some um, foamies and, uh, and fur uh, when it's windy. So you've got 4060s and 6060s. Do you have like a certain situation where you know you would use one over the other? Uh, yeah, we, pref we prefer uh, 4060. It's, it sounds just a little more better, but, mm -hmm. but sometimes you have to use uh, 6060. There is not another option. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, well, can, we, can we have a quick look oh, at yeah. these boxes as well? I love these little, uh, these little tool boxes. Actually, boxes. I'm of course not wearing all these cases no. with me. I, I pack it in the morning in the small orca bag. Mm -hmm. These boxes with all kinds of, of mounts and holders. 
Mm. Uh, to have variety of, of actually uh, here you can everything. see the prototypes like oh yeah these uh, are prototypes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, probably I didn't use it uh, <laughs> yeah. oh maybe uh, I did I did for some uh, soldiers uniform yeah. but uh, is it mm. just special it's special colors. color yeah, yeah, yeah different so. color shall, shall we have a little look at the the, the transmitters you use as well because um, oh yeah, yeah. okay so we can go for the next layer so, so this is your transmitter layer yeah this is transmit layer um, we use like three brands. Our main three brands are Visicom, yeah, Sure, Visicom. and we use also sound devices slash audio limited now. Mm. MTP60 ones, we really like the form factor. Mm. They are really small and what we really like is the range of mm. those units and also I think the battery life is really great mm. comparing to other brands. Mm -hmm. If you compare it to sound devices, it's three hours. This can run for, I don't know, nine, 10, sometimes maybe eight. Easily half a day. Easily, um, uh, under, until the lunch break, I think, easily. That's the sure. We have, I think there are ADX1 here, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really like, I started, uh, my transforming from analog to digital was with sure, yeah. with the new Axiant line. I really like that you don't need to work with the gain uh, mm -hmm. with these. Yeah. Well, it's sound got, devices. Got, yeah. That's the thing. It's a real. It's a real collection now. I think this yeah. is actually quite normal with people to have a bit of everything in their radio mics now because yeah. you're actually with digital. You, with you digital. You it can be. Need, yeah. It can be tricky from options. time to time. So yeah. this is like the older A10, but we can also find the new A20s here. Yeah. And definitely the new A20, the minis, and uh, also, also the larger ones. Yeah, all the booms, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely we will use this for booms, but as mm. you can see, we are also using them for, as a level your microphone, for level your mm. microphones. We were comparing transmitters. Yeah, yeah. And we did, uh, test, we did yeah. test with, with, with like chain test. Yeah, and, uh, with the keychain. Uh, yeah, and, and that was something because, uh, because the sound devices, the A20, is like game changer yeah. jingling keys if you okay. start to jingle the keys like this in front of the microphones yeah it kind of gets interesting well you're gonna hear yeah. when it kind of begins to overload definitely you will hear the artifacts differently yeah. on different transmitters yeah. i've definitely found with analog transmitters if you say for example you've got a loud percussive sound like a door closing or someone putting something down you might hear that yeah. of a compander yeah. As air pressure just yeah. kind of hits it and, and you yeah. kind of hear some artifacts after a loud noise. Yeah. But I never found that with the digital transmission. Yeah. Uh, you could actually use, so from a sound effects set as a point of view, you can still use a lot of the sound effects from a radio it, mic. Even when from, from if you have like a DPA that's close to something yeah. and the quality is really nice, for example, the doors yeah. or car doors, sometimes yeah. you can use like the impact from the uh, lavatory because it's sometimes close and you can... Yeah. Uh, have the boom more distance, so mm. it will get the ambience more. So let's talk a little bit about the um, the other things you've got going on here, because you've got microphones. Yeah, we are sorts. slowly moving from the level ear microphone, <laughs> radio microphones, to our like let's mm. call it like utility sound card. Yeah. Where should we go? Do you want, do you want mirror? mirror, mirror let's go one by one, and yeah. we will show you what's inside. So here are the Cinellas with uh, Sankans CS3. Yeah, CS3. Yeah, yeah. Right. we we yeah. use them occasionally. Uh huh. Yeah, oh, that's really, really cool. Great. That is a really nice uh, snug fit. But yeah, I've got yeah. Peli cases for all of these things, and it's yeah. all a bit like so, uh, so one massive box, but this yeah. is quite neat and tidy. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. we have these. So you've got the shoe covers reducing noise on set with shoes. Yeah, yeah. We have them in this box, mm -hmm. like loads of stuff, different stuff, different colors, different materials. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Kind of grippy rubber. Yeah, grippy Foam rubber. And then material felt. This this stuff comes from, I believe it's IKEA, you yes. know, for, <laughs> yeah. for the yeah. furniture when you want to use it. Yeah, yeah it's such a we challenge. Are trying to keep them everywhere possible. For example, this is like our small card for uh -huh. set where you can just put it in front of your mixer, for example. You can see the mm. down there. And you have some spare things here, for example. You can see also some other products here. Oh, nice. Yeah, so. so this is like some rubbers and also the same things. So. Smaller foams, oh, yeah, yeah, silicon yeah. pads and stuff. Yeah, sometimes yeah, nice. you need something, for example, mm. uh, a glass that somebody's mm. putting on the table. Mm. So it's also really nice. And you have also some other things, for example, for your headphones or stuff that you need to carry around on the set. 
It can be also used for uh, your assistant with yeah. booms, but you usually just use this one if I'm sitting in front of my mixer because it's a little bit higher and I'm always preferring yeah. to stand. Yeah, you prefer to stand. I mean, it's nice, I, nice to see that you work standing up because I think there's something to be said about standing up yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. having a better view over the set I as think well. It's definitely Not better being hidden to, behind the mixer. Yeah, yeah it's definitely <laughs> to. It's better to stand before mm. the mixer, and I'm just usually sitting during the pauses. Mm. <laughs> Back over here. Yeah. There's so much to see. Yeah. So um, go on, come on, come on, Mira. So in this first one, we have some just stuff to refill your stocks when yeah. you are running low on some stickies or. Yeah, things like that. I usually call this a backup because yeah. you have like backup RF cables, for example. Yeah. You have backup, uh, uh, for example, for a Visicom splitter combiner. Yeah. You have also backup for, I don't know, powering for the six packs, for everything. I, uh, call, this, I call this thing my, would be my spares box. Yeah, mm -hmm. spare box or <laughs> yeah. let's call it, I call it backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. We can go away with it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's put it on. To the see what's under. System. So in this one, we call this it is voice the of God. voice of ah. God. So there is a speaker, yeah. there is a microphone for the director if it's needed. Yeah, you usually see. we load this with a different transmitters, different headphones, mm. uh, different things. But usually, uh, also a yeah. Ah, little mixer for yeah, 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 it's a like headphone splitter. Presumably you've got like the big loudspeakers if you need Yeah, definitely. Well. We use Bose yeah. S1 Pros uh, uh -huh. because they are could be charged. Yeah. and you can uh, take them quickly mm. on the set and put anywhere you don't need to find the power oh, and yeah, yeah it's yeah. always uh, yeah. you need to be as remote as possible mm. and not uh, like and waiting for well, the right? other department yeah. to give you the electricity for it so yeah. definitely yeah. then there is the drawer part yeah, yeah. so the upper this drawer, one it's, called it's like mainly batteries, batteries. Mm -hmm. you see a lot of rechargeable batteries also triple a's and this uh, zoom stuff, it can be hand handy sometimes. There is a funny story behind this. Uh, yeah. This is normal zoom F3 is like this. But yeah. I take a saw and I cut it to put it into Nagra 3, inside the Nagra 3 as a backup recorder. So that's why I totally like destroyed this one. This, is a, this is a crazy story. Yeah, yeah. And this is very difficult to, I think, explain without really understanding the background of, of why you took yeah. apart a Nagra to put another recorder inside. <laughs> but it was for a film where you had an actor who was wearing, them, yeah. wearing and using a Nagra in yeah. shot and yeah. you needed to have the Nagra look like it was recording, but Definitely. actually, obviously, it's an old machine and you wanted a new machine within the machine <laughs> yeah, and also transmit to have the back back and to also transmit. So this is why we destroy <laughs> this one. <laughs> and we use this small zoom as the same way as Ambio. It's also ambisonic right. microphone. You can just put it somewhere and, and just that's wait. That's just like an Atmos. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. You can just nice. leave it somewhere. And mm. for example, there's a staircase yeah. and I would just put it on the staircase yeah. and just leave it like for one hour there. Yeah. And if I will return, I'm always happy when I see it. Still recording. Still recording. <laughs> Still recording. <laughs> yeah. and and what sort of microphones are in, are in your interior? Yeah, for example, for the 97s and for the 99s. DPAs. Yeah, DPAs. If you want to go in a car mm. or if you want to record, for example, a piano, mm. you can have the 4099. But it's also useful for dialogue. Mm. And you can see that they are red uh, dotted for mm. like to be for a loud SPL, yeah. so you can put it there in a the piano, mm -hmm. directly on a transmitter, you just put a mi micro dot here, mm -hmm. and you can just put it directly in the piano. We had a, such a scenes oh. with a pianist, and yeah. we just put it this as a reference, because usually the piano is re-recorded afterwards, so. Yeah, so for example, this is a line audio. Stuff, stuff. Microphones, we've used this for a mm -hmm. rig for uh, recording ambiences, mm -hmm. when we need the microphones far away from each other, we use mm -hmm. these line audios. And our these favorite the DPAs, DPAs for the yeah, 18s. The small ones. Right. Yeah. These are great the for plant mics in cars uh -huh. or so. Yeah. And for example, what's great about they, this, it's they, very they, modular. Yeah, modular, yeah. Yeah, and I will just show you this. I think you will know the MMPG. Nice. That you can just unscrew the uh, this actual thing here. Mm -hmm. The capsule from the microphone, from the preamp, and you can just put it here. And it will be really like nice small form factor, mm. and you can go directly to your transmitter, and yeah. you can put it in the car. So yeah, that is awesome. Oh, the third drawer, yeah. yeah. This is uh, I am <laughs> have on the. Uh, so this is uh, what I'm working it 
working with during the morning when we yeah. arrive to set. Hmm. You just need to fill them with uh, batteries. Yeah. So, so these are the G threes, G fours, G fours and G yeah. threes. Yeah. Yeah. And usually they are yeah. also uh, there is written who is it for. Mm. Yeah. Usually like director, script supervisor, mm. DOP. They have their and producer. Mm. They have their own, mm. and really? then they are just labeled <coughs> by numbers yeah. to know mm. who has what. We really like to label stuff before the project. And you can see the accessories here. For example, you can plug a, also a, a small speaker to the IEM. Or you can oh. take a sidekick, for example, oh. and put it also to the IEM. And it will be also um, visible in here. For yeah. example, you don't need a Roger or, or yeah. something like this all the time. So this sidekick is a really useful thing. Mm. Yeah. I imagine maybe a continuity might enjoy just a small yeah. sidekick yeah, 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 compared yeah. to maybe the so, headphones yeah. on and off all so the yeah, time. Because you can still hear quite well, can't you, when they're in? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, really so great. And you have a stereo mono version of this. Mm. So for example, for musical pieces, we use the stereo version. Mm -hmm. And for like, uh, like cues, it's only mm. mono, it's OK. Yeah. Then of course, Time codes. These are little guys. Yeah, I think that goes on camera. Mm. Yeah, we have like so. six of them, and sometimes we put them also on the audio recorders. Like everything is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. To have the same. on the time code and the cables for the. A lot time of codes. cables yeah. for them. Yeah, because that's really neat. Really, yeah. really neat. These days, uh, almost every camera has L Lemo Five or yeah. BNC, but yeah. before when the red cameras were yeah, used, it was smaller, silly yeah. you <laughs> needed a lot more cables. <laughs> For example, these red uh, cables yeah. were never used, but mm. you have them. But yeah. You just can't nice. not have things like that, yeah, can yeah. you? Just yeah. in case. Yeah. Just in case. All right. So next, this is next shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, here are some microphones, some this mi is microphone This mainly cables. used for Cinella, like the Cozy here, and... Uh, these I really, really, yeah, really admire really the really build like quality them. of these. Yeah, and yeah. they're actually really good for wind. Like, yeah, I, I have an MK41 inside yeah, one of yeah. these and use it as an Atmos, but... Yeah. And it's also possible to use them with different microphones. Mm. You will just switch the mounts, yeah. you will just have a different mounting for, I don't know, 90 millimeter microphone, and you can put a different microphone there. So mm. they're quite also versatile, mm. not for one mic only. Cool. These two, so here are the DPAs <laughs> that yeah. Victor just told yeah. you about. We and we have also the wind protection, of course, and su suction caps. Yeah, yes. suction and caps there. for cars and su uh, such a stuff. If you are recording something somewhere, for example, when we have a historical movie, Mm -hmm. And we have like really old vintage cars. Mm -hmm. Always there is a note from the post production. Mm -hmm. Please record the cars because they are very taking over, uh, starting yeah. up. All yeah, those and things, it's yeah. really specific. Specific, the sound is specific. yeah. And yeah. also it's very hard to find mm -hmm. such a cars mm -hmm. like on the street somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, so this is mainly for the vintage cars to not scratch the paint. And so. So you've got them, the two booms inside the exterior mounts, but yeah. there's a boom pole back there. Do you yeah. want showing me that? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. So this one obviously is prepared for interior interior shots because mm -hmm. it has no basket. So at yeah. the moment we are using uh, the sound devices, but we used before these plug-on transmitters from yeah, Sure. I really yeah. love Sure. This is the new ADX3, and before we used the AD3s. I mean, we used the AD3s for three movies. Really like this locking system here, mm. so it was really great. If you want to lock the microphone, it's patent pending. You will yeah, just, it yeah. really is secure, oh, not yeah. like yeah, the yeah. others. <laughs> it has really great range. I never used them in more than two milliwatts. Oh, never wow. had a, never had a dropout on two milliwatts. And we were like we were outside the house, and uh, guys with the booms were moving through the house, like mm. through the stairs, through mm. every room, and we never ever had a dropout with mm. the AD3. So. We really like them. You need to tune them finally for a nice frequency. Mm. But on two, Sam, I have like only one situation in uh, five movies where I put from two to ten. Mm -hmm. Only one situation. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell me a little bit because obviously, as main boom operator, you're on set. You're operating this thing all day long. Any tips and tricks for boom operating that you want to share? I mean, you, your body is your workhorse, and if you hurt yourself operating a boom pole over a long period of time then you're out of work. Yeah. So how do you keep fit and how do you make sure you don't... Yeah. I, don't I think that most of us boom operators at some point uh, have some lower back pain or neck pain or something mm. like that because our job is 
really physical, but on the other side, it's just sometimes being in the same position for five or ten minutes, which is which is not natural for us humans. Let's see an unnatural boom position then, just so yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah. the, the weirdest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so let's imagine I am somewhere in the corner. I will just pull the trolley and yeah, go like this. In front, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. trying to boom <laughs> someone and not to get in shot. Yeah. So I'm like this. And I'm yeah. like this for four minutes, five minutes or yeah. so. So yeah, this is one of the worst mm. positions that you are facing because your core and yeah. all your muscles are not uh, designed for, for such. Then there is one thing that many people do when they are tired. Yeah. That's when they rest the boom on their head. And this is what causes a lot of neck pain. And you will, you will feel that at the end of the day when, when you yeah. rest your boom on your head. <laughs> so you just need to focus on ergonomics, yeah. use both sides, not, not just one hand when I'm right hander. Yeah. So uh, I can better, I call it yeah. focus because mm. in fact we are focusing on actors. Yeah. So I, I focus with right hand yeah. and the most of the weight is, is on this left hand. Yeah, that's right. But you need need to be both handed yes because yes. otherwise and be dexterous going. booming this yeah, is yeah. something i was taught when i started out as well and i wish i took the took the advice to to be just as good on both way around because obviously you want to be standing looking at the camera as well and if you're standing and the camera's behind you yeah that's and it. the camera operator is is getting up you can't see that sometimes happening. you just need to flip because of yeah, the camera like because that. you <laughs> need to see what the camera operator is doing yeah. one little trick that i would yeah. like to show i always use gloves that's yeah. one thing, but gloves without some anti-slip, anti yeah. they are just smooth. smooth. Yeah. That, and then I'm not gripping the, the pole. Mm. I'm just leaving yeah. it like this be between my thumb and mm. index. And I'm rotating with, with right hand and not creating much of a noise, mm. of handling noise, mm. because these DPA microphones, they can capture the handling noise yeah. quite well. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then when I have gloves, I can do this. Ah, that's good. Like yeah. this, you, yeah. you, you can hear it, but, uh, but with gloves, it's much better. Ah, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's the thing about this mic, that it is pretty small and yeah. also light. Mm -hmm. And with this basket, it, when you have the longest possible boom, yeah. it, it's night and day according, uh, okay. comparing to other mics that are bigger. Yeah. So uh, yeah. these it, aren't that heavy. It's a massive factor, the weight, isn't it, for a boom operator to have something which is just a bit, a little bit too much can really factor into how much you can really be dexterous with the pole yeah. in the air if it's actually a heavy Definitely. weight on the end of the pole. Yeah, and when you are on like the on the full, full boom, yeah. then it is like the older booms, this one, they yeah. tend to... Um, Bend, yeah. Yeah. to bend yeah. and when you have two actors they are like two or three meters and mm. you need to cue between them yeah. it's like you do this and the end of the boom does it like in one second <laughs> <laughs> because it bends <laughs> when there is a heavy mic you know yeah so it bends so, but with this it's it's like easier because there is not that much leverage on the mm. end of the boom pole when i was young it was all about yeah we need to get the best sound possible yeah. now sometimes it is do I want to fight for this camera not to be that wide or, or something like that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about finding the right balance mm -hmm. and because it's, it's a teamwork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and maybe one big game changer for me these days yeah. is the live monitoring that I right. use a lot. Yeah. I always, always wear a walkie-talkie harness yeah. where I have my receiver for my headphones. Mm -hmm. I use in-ears mm -hmm. and only one. Mm -hmm. for the second year to be able to hear yeah. what's going on. Mm. And in the harness, I have always iPhone mm -hmm. with a live feed from cameras. That's the Q-Take system. Yeah, there's yeah. a Q-Take system, yeah. which comes from Slovakia. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Shout, out <laughs> shout out to Lada Struhar. Yeah, it's yeah. really helped us a lot. Everything yeah. is much, much, much faster. Yeah, I amazing. don't have to go to see what, mm -hmm. for example, to see yeah. focus pullers monitor. Yeah to see the framing, yeah. That's how, so. how does your comm system work if you're talking to one another? Yeah. Actually, that's interesting because uh -huh. I saw your video that you have these mics. Yeah. So Victor has one, but uh -huh. I don't. Yeah. And okay. when I talk to him, I talk directly to Sometimes the boom. Sometimes to so. the boom, but we are uh, like working on the uh, full duplex system. 
Yeah. But I think it's best to use the walkie talkies because you have better range. If yeah. Adam is in the uh, yeah, well, trailer with the yeah. actors, it's not possible to get it on a G3. My system yeah. uses two channels on my desk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I needed 16 channels, yeah. I'd need to it's lose one, of, the one or two of those yeah, channels. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's not the perfect solution, but um, it's, it's, it's one of yeah. these things that everyone ends up having their own yeah. solution for how they talk to their team, how the team talk back to them quickly and mm -hmm. uh, effectively. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. trying to keep the desk all the 16 channels for the Dante or yeah. for the playback from mm. my Pro Tools session here mm. for the music that I want to play some pieces so mm. I'm trying to yeah, or also sometimes yeah and want to record maybe ambience right yeah. away so yeah. to keep like four tracks maybe or three tracks for the double MS is really yeah. great but also, like, if there's an atmospheres to record, do you have certain ways that you go about recording yeah, atmospheres? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we have some something here, and let's take it out. This is one thing. This is, this is our hero for ambiences. So, Sennheiser Ambio. I think a lot of you know this. It's an ambisonic microphone, which means that you can. Uh, record format A format and B format with this and you can work really nicely with this in post-production So we are trained also to production sound and also trained to post-production post-production sound and Why we use this is you can rotate the capsule you can rotate where the mic is aiming You can decide many things in post-production with this thing so it can be Pointed like this way, it can be mm. pointed this way. I use it in the end far away, so I'm always aiming. But for example, if the crowd will move uh, this side, I can just rotate the capsule like this mm. in the post production very easily. We had a lot of action movies, uh, scenes with extras yeah. when they were shouting, they were across everywhere across us. So there was sometimes situation that Mirror was the key boom and Adam was on the second boom with this mm -hmm. on the boom. And uh, for example, we had a huge scene in a prison where everybody was shouting. Yeah. And Adam just captured the whole 360 with this microphone mm. and I could do uh, like miracles in the post-production with this, so. Akia! So we're in Victor's studio upstairs and discussing the Sennheiser Ambio microphone you were using on, yeah. on this film in the jail. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is a great opportunity to see the studio set up and also just going to hear this mic in the original Pro Tools session and hear how it sounds. So do you mind playing through a section? Yeah, I will play a short part of the scene mm -hmm. and we were focused with the MBO on the crowds, on the reaction of the crowds. Mm -hmm. And for example, in this scene, Miro was on the boom, Adam was on the MBO, mm -hmm. and we were recording like the direct reactions at those scenes because there were too many extras and I mm -hmm. think it's unreplaceable, something no, like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah totally. And let's have it so we can see sort of like how the microphone hears, right? Yeah, we use a plugin for this. It's from a company called Harpax. Oh. And you can just choose that if what microphone you are using. Mm -hmm. And here we have just the basic setup for surround sound. And uh, let me just uh, give it like this. You will see how the sounds are acting in the environment, like mm -hmm. in the 5.1. So let's just see it. And now the microphone will start. Yeah, it's all coming from behind. Yeah, yeah. So you you sides. feel like yeah. you are in the environment. So mm. I think it's really hard to get it on the YouTube the same way that you <laughs> will feel it in the studio or in the cinema. But it's a really great trick. That really enhance the yeah. experience of feeling definitely. like you're in that claustrophobic yeah, environment. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. All right, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go back. Yeah. And while we're up here, what yeah. a cool little studio. So yeah, this is where you yeah, do yeah. some cable yeah, maintenance, for right? example, when I'm starting such an idea, I will go with a smaller connector. So I will just go for, I don't know, uh, 
small uh, jack connectors, I have a high C connectors, I have everything for powering, uh, everything for like from huge XLR to small XLR. Mm -hmm. So trying to uh, keep the things at the shop all the time because you need them like the last second. And you time. do your own soldering as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is like the cable work that will be going mm -hmm. on on the other projects. So. Mm -hmm. And also we have some labeling stuff here, I can show you that when we are doing the cables, we are also preparing the labels for the cables, so from every color, from from every uh, thing that's... Things like this, right? Yeah, 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 for the, the, example, this, you, have, yeah. you know that this is aux for power. I use yellow color always for powering mm. and also this high cool. This is yeah. the sort of thing that... Quite often, like assistants who want to learn new skills, yeah, learn a bit of soldering, definitely. learn yeah. how to do these sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. It's really valuable. Had, uh, this is always a problem to find a shop that will make it in the last second. So yeah. I just buy all the equipment needed, and I'm, I can count on myself uh, during the preparation that yeah. everything will be done. So, yeah. Cool. Let's get back downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We know if you have the loop groups, yeah. it will sound fake. Mm. It's just sounding fake. You have like seven, eight people shouting, blah, 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 blah. but if you are on a set in yeah. a prison, you have something in your hand and you are aggressive mm. and there's like 100 extras, it's like yeah. a different feeling. Yeah. And if you have a movie based around this, mm. you need to have like recording from the set. So we deal it with the production to give us every time when we have such a large scene, mm. a time, maybe not more than 30 minutes to record the extras right mm. after the scene. Like mm -hmm. we ended up the scene with the extras yeah. and right away we recorded the same thing, the shouting. We were yeah. trying to isolate it during dialogues, yeah. of course, yeah. but right afterwards when they were like in the mood, we yeah. were just straightly recording this. That's and great. it was phenomenal this way because the movie was very successful, won best sound, had a lot of nominations yeah. and it was really sounding natural. Let's have a little look down here because you've got one other little thing which I think is quite cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can, do you mind if I pull this out? Yeah. So what do you call this? Yeah, my like nickname for this is Audio Village. <laughs> yeah. Audio Village. So the key thing with yeah. this kit is that it's putting a real value on making sure that the director and producers and, and even the actors when they hear it back are hearing back the best quality definitely. sound. So they hear very similar to what you hear in your ears yeah, through a definitely. cable. And this means that you're caring for that final step in the process when you send your XLR cable, there you go video, there's your sound feed, and it normally ends up going through something, something like which this. is not sound pro kit yeah, sometimes, for right? For example, just check these things for gains. Yeah, I no will, metering. No metering, that's the first thing, and usually I will put it like this to calibrate it, and after three days I will find it like this. Oh, it's not loud enough, turn it up, and the first yeah, thing is Yeah, 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 because you have, a, you have a soft scene, and <laughs> yeah. some guy will just decide, it, like, ah, let's go full, because we have a and then soft From scene. then on, it's yeah. distorting for like three yeah. days in a row, and, and no one even says it's distorting, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the channel you and guys don't listen to. is like listening to a hissy, shitty, distorted <laughs> yeah. sound, and you are judged for this sound, yeah. as Tom William mentioned in the video. Yeah. So it's not, uh, I think, a cool thing. Mm. So with this RME, you have crazy great drivers for every system, Windows, Mac, yeah. and you will just hand one SD card with the driver. It will be installed in 30 mm. seconds. They yeah. will just plug one USB cable from the back. Yeah. And there's two ways how to use this. The first way is to use it cabled. You will run one Ethernet cable with yeah. four channels of audio, two in, two out. Yeah. Or you can just put a, uh, via the patch panel back mm. the audio into the transmitter and receiver and you can go wirelessly with this. Mm. So it's a really great unit. It will mm. power for two days with these two batteries mm. and it's yeah. set and forget. You will just dial the gains, you will lock it. Mm. And also the guys from the video village have a nice fit from the headphones and you, Does you can Does it do a delay as well? Because yeah. sometimes there's delay. Like, that I they usually have to use in. delays on my card because uh -huh. Ah. With this setup, they can send me the feedback and I can put the uh, delay on just the channel that I want to. Mm -hmm. And usually I'm using uh, one of the stereo transmitters for mm -hmm. Village, it's the same that's mm -hmm. here. And on the left channel, there's the undelayed version mm -hmm. and on the right channel is the delayed version. Yeah. Because when the director is on the set and he's not looking on the monitors, yeah. he wants the like, live, live. Yeah. And if he wants the delay, he will just take the 
G4 and put this from left to right. And here's the delay oh, version. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's lovely to yeah. chat with you guys about this. Thank you, Simon, <laughs> for this. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Simon, for everything. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. That was that was yeah. it. I just think that was the one. Great, great. Uh, the, and it was one I showed, no? Okay. Pretty, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. How long was that? One hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I have to go. <laughs>